بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد Another point to mention is that after uh, the points that we raised uh, at the time of the Prophet himself when the Prophet was alive at his lifetime we see that Quran says <coughs> in Surah An-Nisa verse 64 we, re- we, re- we frequently repeat this verse وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْبَرُوا اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْبَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَبَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا If they come to you when they have sinned and do istighfar and they ask Rasulullah to do istighfar for them or Rasulullah do istighfar for us this is istighasa to ask him to Ya Rasulullah do istighfar for me so Allah says لَبَجَدُوا اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا Rahima. So, istighfar of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here is brought under the name of Tawwab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Rasul does istighfar for them and they do istighfar for them, these two will call the name of Tawwab of Allah. So, Allah is saying that Rasul can be here a vasila for you to do istighfar for you. This is in getting close to Allah and in uh, getting free from the sins. And uh, this is not uh, uh, um, separate from the fact that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is vajih. He has a credit before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, because he has a credit, he is the, he is the closest person to Allah. And by being close to Allah, he has a credit. And then his uh, request has impact in the mercy to be given to the people. And this is one of the aspects of his being Rahmatan Lil Alamin as Quran says. Ama arsalnaka illa Rahmatan Lil Alamin. So you are Rahma for all. You are blessing and mercy for all. So one aspect of his blessing is that uh, for him, Allah uh, will forgive you. When you appeal to the Prophet, and of course appealing to the Prophet, or answers there are conditions, and meeting those conditions, you have to do some good things. You have to ascend yourself to some uh, level, then you will have the uh, quality of being uh, of receiving the dua and shafa of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. Again, you have to do something, so it gives hope to you. It gives a kind of uh, hope to people not to be disappointed. So even though Allah is Qafur and Rahim, Allah is Tawwab, <coughs> but there are conditions. Here Allah mentions one of the conditions. We talked about in the previous verses that uh, when Allah says something, uh, there are conditions for that. Allah gives Shafa, but there are conditions for that. So Allah is Tawwab, there could be conditions for that. So Allah says one of the conditions is that Rasul should do istighfar for them because he is closest. As the hadith in Shia book, in Sunni book says that uh, the hadith in, in Sunni book is in Sahih Bukhari, volume 8, page 105. Uh, it narrates, they narrate from Rasulullah saying that أَمَا تَغَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبْ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا فَتَرَزْتُ عَلَيْهِ My servants, my ibad, they cannot get close to me by anything better than what I have made obligatory upon them. And also my app, my servant can get close to me by nawafil. Allah is getting close by the obligations, those, that Allah, those things that Allah has made obligatory upon you, those things that Allah has made mustahab and nafila. Then Allah says, when he gets close to me, Hatta uhibbahu, I will love him. Faiza ahbabtuhu kuntu sam'ahu allazi yasma'u bih. When I love him, then I will be his ears that he hears through those ears. Wa basaruhu allazi yubsiru bihi. And I will be his eyes that he sees through those eyes. 
و یده اللتی یبتش بها his hands that he uses for work و رجله اللذی و رجله اللتی یمشی بها I will be his feet that he works on them و این سألني لأتينه and if he asks me something certainly I will give him و لئن استعازني لا أئذنه if he seeks refuge from something I will give shelter to him I will uh, support him so Allah to be somebody's ears to be somebody's eyes to be somebody's hands is it only for this world it is not mentioned so if Allah is somebody's eyes if Allah is somebody's ears what is surprising if if the person also has the capacity to hear while he is in Barzakh You said that you, they, even Wahhabis agree that there is a life in Barzakh. Akmal, he said, more, the most perfect life is for the Prophet, as Bin Baz and the others mentioned. So the Prophet has a life. And Allah says that when a person gets close to me, I will be his eyes, I will be his ears. Means that I, he will be ever and capable to see things that others cannot see. He can hear things that others cannot hear. Otherwise, you and me, we can see things, we can hear things. <coughs> and to see the things that we see, to hear the things that we hear, we don't need to be close to Allah. Even you see Kuffar, Kafir, and Mushrik, everybody is hearing things we hear, they see what we see. So this seeing and this hearing, even though also this is by the help of Allah, but this is not something that you will achieve by getting close to Allah. That capability of seeing and hearing and having the uh, position of istijabah to dua that Allah answers you call. These are the qualities for those who get close to Allah. And we know that nobody was close to Allah the way that the Prophet was close to Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in Quran about Isa alayhi salam, Vajihan fit dunya wal akhirah. Isa was Vajih. Vajih means he had the credit. In dua tawassul bin nikal ya wajihan inda Allah ishfa' lana inda Allah wajih means the one who has a credit Allah says Isa had credit in this world and the other so the credit is not finished by their death he has credit here he has credit there Allah calls Musa as wajih the one who has a credit and nobody none of them has the credit that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had so if Isa is Vajih in this world and the other, why not the Prophet to be Vajih in this world and the other? Why not Imam Ali, uh, that according to the declaration of Quran, his nafs of Rasul, he is the soul of the Prophet, to be Vajih in this dunya and to, to be Vajih in the other? When they uh, are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such closeness that the Prophet reached to the level of Qaba Qawsayn Aw Adna according to Quran. So when he is such close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not odd that Allah to be his ears, Allah to be his uh, eyes, then he can see things that others cannot see. فَسَيَّرَ Allah, we recited the verse that Quran says, فَسَيَّرَ اللَّهُ أَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ Allah will see your acts, Rasulullah will see your acts. And according to the context, that, uh, context of the verse, this is in this world. means that in this world, whatever you do, Rasul and Mu'minun, that the hadith, uh, through hadith says that, that this is Imam Ali, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and Imam Ali, these are the ones who see your act. Otherwise, uh, no, this is not for all mu'maneen. Whatever you and me we do, this is behind the uh, curtains of mercy of Allah. You don't know what kind of person I am, otherwise you didn't come to me. I, I don't know who you are. Everybody knows himself better. We know how much sins we have. Uh, in a record, but people do not know this is the mercy of Allah that Allah hides it. So, al mu'minun, those mu'minin that they can see your acts in this dunya, they are not the general mu'minin, they are specific ones. They should be, otherwise, this is certain that people do not know whatever the others have done. So, though those you know, authentic hadiths, sahih hadiths that say, al mu'minun, here are Imams of Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam, it suit the context of the verse that the Prophet and Imams. They are so close to Allah that Allah is their eyes, Allah is their ear. 
So Allah, they can see things that others cannot see. They can hear things that others cannot hear. They can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah to answer them the way that Allah does not answer to others. And it's very interesting in Quran says, Amman yujibul muzhtarra iza da'ahu wa yakshifu su yaj'alukum khulafa wa al-ars. Imam, Rasul, they are Khalifatullah on the earth. And when a person is Imam, when a person is Rasul, he is Khalifatullah. And he, he is in the position of true Izterar. He has this uh, urgent call that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, <coughs> will answer the call. Allah in that uh, uh, verse puts a condition. You have to be Muzhtar. You have to have istirah, this urgent need, then Allah will answer you. أَمَّا يُجِيبُ الْمُزْتَرَّ إِذَا دَآهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ And removes the hardships and difficulties. Then he says, وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْعَرْزِ So this is a specific one. They are those who are Khalifatullah. So it means that the call of Khalifatullah is a specific. The true Muzdar, when we say that Imam al-Asr is the true Muzdar, is the real Muzdar, because he's Khalifatullah. And Quran says, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُزْتَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْعَرْسِ So, here, Rasulullah can be Vajih, and because he is Vajih, he can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things that other people cannot call. There are abundant hadiths in our books and Sunni books. I just re refer to two because we basically want to focus on Quran. So I just refer to two hadiths to see that even in daily issues, in worldly issues, they used to appeal to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Shuaib Arnaud, uh, the hadith is in uh, Musnad Imam Ahmad, uh, Ahmad bin Hanbal. Shuaib Arnaud, this uh, master of hadith of Ahlul Sunnah, he says the hadith is sahih. Also in other books, it has come and they say it's Sahih. Volume 28, page 478. Haddasana Usman bin Omar, he narrates the hadith to come to uh, an Usman bin uh, Hunayf. Usman bin Hunayf is one of the great Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anna rajulan zarir al-basar al-ata an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says a person who had a problem with the eye, blind, came to Rasulullah. Ask Allah to give shifa to me. The Prophet said, if, if you want, I can pray for you, but it's better for you to, to keep uh, this state of being blind, then you will have the reward in the other world. Uh, no, please, I don't want the reward there. Uh, now I want to have my sight. <laughs> Yeah, this is better. The Prophet said, go and make a wuzu. And do a good wuzu. And perform two rakah of salat. And then call Allah by this dua. So Rasulullah could make the dua for him, but he is, he is teaching them tawassul to, to their to Prophet. So he's not only just solving that person's problem, he's teaching a kind of sunnah to the others, that when you are in haja, when you are in need, do this thing, then Allah will answer you. He said, you go make a good wuzu and perform two rakah of salat, then call Allah, say, Allahumma inni as'aluka, oh Allah, I call you. وَأَتَوَجَّهُ إِلَيْكَ بِالنَّبِيِّكَ مُحَمَّدًا نَبِيَّ الرَّحْمَةِ And I am turning to you through your nabi, you, you Prophet Muhammad Nabi al Rahma, who is the Rahmatan lil Alameen. So, this is tawassul to the Prophet. This is not tawassul to dua of the Prophet. You see, he said, Call for me. So, you don't say, Atavajahu ilayke bi dua e I want you, if uh, your Prophet call for me. He said, No, I am calling you in the name of your Prophet, for the sake of your Prophet to give my haja to me. وَأَتَوَجَّهُ إِلَيْكَ بِالنَّبِيِّكَ مُحَمَّدًا نَّبِيِّ الرَّحْمَةِ Then you say, Ya Muhammad. This is Istavasa. O oh, Muhammad. Istavasa. اللهم إني أسألك وأتوجه إليك بالنبيك محمد النبي الرحمة يا محمد إني توجهت بك إلى ربي. O oh, Muhammad. I am addressing you in my haja to call uh, إلى ربي towards my Allah. So you are the 
one between me and Allah. Fi hajati, hazihi, in this hajat that I have, in this need that I have. Fatakzili, then fatakzili to provide me with my haja. Allahumma shafi'ahu fi, oh Allah, make Rasul to be intercessor for me, to be my intercessor. So you see, the Prophet taught him the way of dua, to have a tabassul and istighasa to the Prophet. There is an, again another hadith, this is in Sahih Bukhari, volume 2, page 12, that an Abd Anas ibn Malik qala asabat al nas sanatan ala ahd al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa bain al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakhtub fi yawm jum'a qama arabi. فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ هَلَكَ الْمَالِ وَجَاءَ الْيَارِ It was a year of hunger, there was no rain, drought, so the Prophet was performing Jum'ah and he was reciting khutbah. A man raised and said, Ya Rasulullah, our property is destroyed, our families are hungry, no rain. فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ لَنَا So call Allah for us. فَرَفَعَ يَدَيْهِ وَمَا نَرَ فِي السَّمَاءِ uh, the sky was clean, no cloud, nothing. The Prophet raised his hands. In less than a time that he brought his hands down, we saw that the sky is full of uh, clouds like the big mountains. ثم لم ينزل عن من بره حتى رأيت المطر يتحاضر على لحيته صلى الله عليه وسلم. Before he come down from his member, I saw that these drops of rain going down his beard means that it was raining on the uh, head of the Rasulullah. So I saw the drops of rain coming down his face. فَمُطِرْنَا يَوْمَنَا ذَلِكَ وَمِنَ الْغَدِ وَبَعْدَ الْغَدِ Three days it was raining. وَالَّذِي يَلِيهَ هَتَّ الْجُمْعَةِ Till the day of Jum'ah. At Jum'at al-Ukhra. وَقَامَ ذَلِكَ الْأَعْرَابِي أَوْ قَالَ غَيْرُهُ That person or somebody else said, فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ تَحَدَّمَ الْبِنَاءُ وَغَرِغَ الْمَالِ Now it's too much rain. Everything is being ruined, destroyed. فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ لَنَا Then now call for us. Second time. Now it's flood. Flood is coming. فَرَفَعَ يَدَيْهِ فَقَالَ أَلَّهُمَّ حَوَالِينَ وَلَا عَلَيْنَا O Allah, may it rain around us, not on the city. فَمَا يَشِيرُ بِيَدَهِ إِلَى نَاحِيَةٍ مِنَ الصَّحَابِ لَنْ فَرَجَتْ He referred with his finger to the clouds then, as if they opened the created gap. وَصَارَتَ الْمَدِينَةُ مِسْلَ الْجَوْبَةِ Now it was like an island which is on top, no rain there, but around Medina was raining. وَسَالَ الْوَادِ قَنَاتُ شَهْرًا For a month, the wadi, the river which was there was, water was running. وَلَمْ يَجَ أَحَدٌ مِنْ نَاهِيَةٍ إِلَّا حَدَّسَ بِالْجُودِ Everybody came from different areas and said, Alhamdulillah, there is barakah and this rain brought lots of barakah for us. So you see that this is vajaha, credit of Rasulullah, mentioned in their books. And the other one, Rasulullah taught them how to do istighasa to the Rasul. In another hadith, Musnad al-Muzu'i, Musnad al-Muzu'i, Al-Jama'i lil-Kutub al-Ashara, Suhaib Abdul Jabbar has written, Al-Bani, the outstanding shaykh and Imam of Mahabi, says the hadith is sahih. That again refers to the hadith of the blind person coming to Rasulullah, and Rasulullah teaching him, Tabassul and Istagasa. So, you see that Vijahat uh, and the credit that Rasulullah had in his lifetime uh, made him uh, of such a position, such close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that people could ask him in their daily hajat or for getting close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Quran declares it. Uh, then uh, you remember we said that Isa alayhi salam says uh, when he Quran says that he was giving glad tidings of the coming of 
Rasul اسمه Ahmad. His name is Ahmad. So he's giving glad tidings. He said that when Isa was Vajih himself, when Isa had reputation and credit himself, when Isa could uh, provide people in their hajat by Iznillah. So when he gives glad tidings, means that somebody of higher capability, somebody of higher position, somebody of higher credit, somebody of higher book is coming. Then to make sense, to make sense that he is giving the glad tidings. Otherwise, if he doesn't have the capacity that Isa had, then what is the glad tidings? Imagine uh, when, when, when the principal of the university is going, the mission is out, he's, he's going back, somebody else is coming. And he says, I'm giving the glad tidings that, that the other modiri is coming, but he's great, but he cannot speak English, he doesn't have a knowledge. So what is the glad tidings? The glad tidings means that he, his, his language is better than the previous one, his knowledge is more than the previous one, his management is better than the, the previous one. So when he, the, 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 the newcomer, in, he is better than the previous one, then the glad tiding finds meaning. Otherwise, what is the meaning of glad tiding? So in those areas that deals with the university, the matter of teaching, the matter of management, in these areas, if the newcomer is better than the other, then you can say the glad tiding. This is Bishara. So when Isa is giving Bishara, certainly the one who is coming should be higher than the previous one, better than and higher than Isa himself. So this is something that uh, even those people may not reject it at the time of the Prophet. Now the question comes that uh, what if uh, it is after the time of the Prophet, when the Prophet is uh, not in this world, after his demise, can also do we have uh, can also we have tabassul to him or not? Can we do a staghasa to him or not? Some of those hadiths that the Prophet taught to that person, Allahumma in yas'aluka bin nabiyyika. This is not limited to the time of the Prophet. Because even if you believe that the Prophet doesn't hear you, here you are calling Allah for the sake of the Prophet. There is no problem with that. Because you are addressing Allah. You are saying, oh Allah, I ask you for the sake of the Prophet. And then he says, Ya Muhammad. And again, that is not conditioned, limited to the time of the Prophet. But inshallah, uh, we'll go to more proofs on this, to show from Quran, to show that the Prophet who has life, the Prophet who even Wahhabis declared that he has akmalul hayat, the highest level of life is for the Prophet. When Shuhada they have life, when the uh, good people like Shuhada they have life, the Prophet's life should be much higher than them. Now if the Prophet was Vajih in this world and now he has such a great life, can he hear us or not? And can we call him or not? The way that this person said, Ya Muhammad, can we call him Ya Muhammad or not? Inshallah, we will talk in the coming session.